And I thought I'd just show you before I start the routing how I'm holding the base because it's very awkward. Uh, you know, there's really no flat surfaces on the thing. It's round everywhere. And so it's hard to hold something like that to where you can work on it. You can see I have a towel folded up right here and it's against my workbench. And so the, I have the, uh, and that's folded up so that it's thick padding. And uh, the base then is resting against that, against my workbench. Then I have a ratchet strap. And I don't know how well you're going to see that, but the ratchet strap is holding it to my work table. I have some welded on pieces on each end of the, of the work table, which weren't put there for this purpose, but they just were very handy. I also have the base sitting on a piece of carpet if you can see down there and it's hard to hold this camera and see what I'm pointing at here um, anyway so it's sitting on carpet so everything's padded and then I have a little 2 by 4 across the legs there to keep it from sliding that way and then I don't have the ratchet strap tightened up very tight as a matter of fact it's you know just barely snug so uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just snug. You, you can still move this uh, fairly easily, uh, not with some, with some effort. So it's just snug enough that I can take the router with both hands now and lay it on here and very precisely route out the middle of this. Um, I wanted to be able to use both hands with the router. I don't want to be trying to hold the base and having it move around while I'm using the router. And uh, we'll give it a little shot on camera and just see how that goes. And you, of course, need to plug in your router first. That's a good idea. Sometimes they work better when they're plugged in. This router is a really stout router. When you turn it on, you better have a hold of it. <laughs> Okay, the, uh, I forgot to tell you too that I did decide to use the dovetailing bit that I had um, to, to do the hogging out here. The dovetailing bit, as best I can tell, looks like it's going to match the angle of the dovetail almost perfectly, which is kind of amazing. So you can see I've taken about a, oh, I would say that's a 3 8 deep cut and went right down the center. Didn't even try to get close to my lines or anything like that yet. And I don't know that I will get too close to them. I'll probably stay at least, oh, an eighth to uh, a sixteenth away from my lines at least. Uh, as, because the way that dovetail bit works too, it, I don't want it to be cutting in deeper. I, I just don't know. I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about it. So I'll have to do a little trial and error is basically what it's going to amount to. Okay, the adjustment on this uh, router is actually pretty cool. I like the way this thing adjusts. You just loosen this screw here, and then you've got notches around on this thing here that you slide it down to the next depth you want to go. I have my final depth marked already, and so I'm just going to split about the difference there of where I'm at and how deep I want to go and take another pass and see what that looks like. Okay, well you learn as you go, and what I learned there is that, and I knew this already, I just got ahead of myself, uh, is that the length of the cutter on the dovetail is not very long, so it's going to have to go in very shallow increments. So I'm going to have to come back up. I'm going to actually have to widen the hole out some at the height where I was already. And I don't remember exactly where that was, but I'll, as long as the bit's cutting wood all the way, it doesn't really matter. And so I've got the bit back up where it's going to be cutting wood the full depth of the bit that is exposed. And so I'm going to widen my area out a little bit.
I'm actually pretty impressed with that so far. I'm hoping this is going to work out just right. Um, I'm staying away from the far end down there. Um, I think that's actually going to be a flush cut anyway based on the way it looks, but uh, I'm staying away from that end because I know the dovetail cuts under, so I'm staying away from there by at least a good quarter of an inch and because I don't want to cut through into the plywood. And on here on the sides going down, I'm staying away from that by, oh, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch or something like that. And got to keep in mind that the lines are actually narrower, slightly narrower than I want anyway. So I've got plenty of wood there. Uh, that did a pretty good job. You can kind of take a look at this here. If you can see it there. Trying to hold the camera is just not the best way to do this, but that's what I've got. So and uh, you can see where I did cut a little deeper that other cut and now I'll take this cut down to that depth okay now. well I've just taken one more pass I'm nowhere near depth or width yet at all I'm just uh, I've got that all at the same level now and uh, I just wanted to check this as a test fit to see if the angles look good on the bit compared to the part and they look really good I'm amazed that I think the angle is almost perfect so I'm gonna be able to get this very close with the router and uh, you can see that it's already starting to fit up and uh, as far as I can tell looking down the neck it looks straight going down the the body of the base uh, it looks really good I'm I'm very impressed at the moment so I'm very lucky here that this is all working out. So I'm going to try to get, uh, oh, I don't know, probably 80% uh, of the depth on this next cut. Okay, what I've discovered is that while the angles are pretty good and all that, the uh, and I, I could have measured this and found this out, and I already kind of knew it anyway, uh, the front of this slot is going to have to be deeper than the back. Um, so I've only got a little bit more to go before I'm at full depth for the back. So, and that's going to be about all I'll be able to use the router then because uh, I can only go to that depth. As so I, I keep going here, I keep deciding how I can do a little bit more with the router. What I can do is I've already set the depth of the router to the, to the shallowest part of the dovetail. So I've already got to the depth back here. I can go down quite a bit more up here. So what I'm going to do is kind of do it in stair steps. I'm going to set it slightly deeper, go back about halfway, then I'll set it slightly deeper and just cut out the front quarter here. So it'll be stair stepped, but then I can take the chisel and, and level all that okay. off. Okay, I think I'm just about done with the router. I wish I could use it more because it sure does make it easy. Um, and I've got some stair stepping going on here and uh, let me show you what that looks like I'm again just gonna hand hold the camera and if you can see here you can see that I'm deeper and then I went there's a little step there then there's another little step right there then there's another little step right there and then back here there's another step I could probably refine that some more if I wanted to get you know really precise but I think since we're just basically roughing it out with the uh, router I think I'm done with the router and now I'm gonna go to hand fitting everything so it's gonna be all chisel work from here out you can see that the neck fits it pretty good really um, it uh, there's uh, almost the same amount of gap all the way down along the neck now it was higher here on the front but now that I've dropped it down it's the same about a gap all the way back to the back so the depth angle looks like it's pretty darn close We've right got now the uh, this is all cleaned up and I put pencil lead all over this whole thing I was trying to use carbon paper but it just wasn't working so I put the pencil lead on this and now I slide it into my joint and uh, it leaves lead wherever there's a high spot. And you can see I've got the joint going on pretty far now. We're about 75% fitted. It doesn't have any play in it at all. It's very snug and uh, we just keep going and fitting like this and then we have to tap it back out. 
with the rubber mallet and I can see all kinds of little high spots in there very and I'll try to bring you in close here with the camera where you can see that and uh, try to quit moving the camera so much but you can see those dark spots and those are where the lead has rubbed off and I have taken the chisel and really sharpened it uh, extra fine it will shave hair no problem at all and uh, so I'm just hand shaving all these little high spots off very slow tedious work and uh, it doesn't take much all at once it's going to fit I know how this works I've done this before so did to it as far as new marks and things yes there's still a few showing up so we'll just keep doing that process and I'll bring you back when it fits it's in a long tight. slow process <laughs> I have uh, got about a half inch to go I would say I will tell you that it is so tight the joint is so tight that you cannot move it without moving the base. It, there is no wiggle to it whatsoever in any direction. It is absolutely airtight. Um, <clears throat> the uh, matter of fact, when you drive it in there like that by hand, it gets so tight you cannot get it back out. So you do have to tap it back out with a rubber hammer each time. And uh, I'm still working off of the, all this uh, pencil lead that I put on here. Uh, when I get down to about an eighth inch fit, I'm going to take the pencil lead off and then just by taking that off, it'll probably let it slide in here just enough. So I'm real happy with the fit right now. I don't think you could make it fit any tighter. I don't think there's any possible way. We'll bring you back when we get her fit and tight. Well, there's a good chance I'm done. And the truth is, I haven't tried fitting this last time yet. The last time I stuck it in there, it still had pencil lead all over this so that I could see the marks left by the pencil lead inside the slot. And I carved away those last marks or shaved them away. And then I scraped all the pencil lead off of here, which is actually making this tiny bit smaller also. And so I'm hoping that it'll fit all the way. I have a feeling it'll still be a hair tight, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be very close. You can see there's a about a pencil lead width. It looks bigger than that on camera, but it's only about a sixteenth of an inch from going tight. This joint here is just, it's tight. It looks like there's a hole there, but there's not. That block of wood that's inside there, the neck is sitting tight to that. When I start wiggling this, there is absolutely no play whatsoever. So it is tight.